Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sapnuski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. Welcome to part three of my LumaFusion Masterclass. Now that we went through the toolbar and the basic interface, let's have some fun with editing. Let's start doing a little bit of a basic edit. Let's launch LumaFusion. I am going to be pulling everything from my photo roll, so I am going to choose my sources as photos and I'm going to hit all photos and videos and that's going to bring up everything that I have in my photo roll. Let's say you're not sure which video clip you want to start with. You can browse each one of the clips by single tapping it and that will bring it over into the preview window and you can see what you have here and what it is you want to begin to work with. Once you decide on the video clip that you want to bring into the main timeline, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can hit this down arrow and that is going to put that very first clip on your main timeline. And to demonstrate another way, I'll hit the undo button to erase my last action. Or you can grab it and hold it and bring it down and place it on the timeline yourself. This clip is just a few seconds long. So let's say I wanted to begin adding some additional clips. Same thing. I can just tap it and hold it and bring it down onto the timeline. I want to show you that you can use finger gestures. If we wanted to make this whole entire timeline a little smaller so that we can see the whole project, all we'd have to do is take our two fingers, put it on the screen and pull together and that will shrink the size of your timeline. And of course, to make it bigger, same thing. You would just put your fingers on there and spread it apart to make it larger. Now that we can see all the clips and the way that they're organized, let's say we wanted to make this particular clip second instead of third. All we would have to do is grab it, press it and hold it, move it and bring it to where we'd want to say it until we see that little yellow, what looks like a yellow bracket. Then we can just drop it there. The very first thing that I like to do whenever I'm working with my video is to begin doing all of the color correction and the color grading. I'm going to go to the first clip on the timeline and I'm going to hit the pencil to edit it. The top icon that looks like a little paint palette, they give you a lot of different options when it comes to coloring. I like to hit original. This is going to bring up a drop down menu and this is going to allow you to work with the color correction of your clip. I work with a Canon camera and I work in cine style. It's not a raw file, but it's pretty close. If you're working with images that were shot on your iPhone, you may not have to do as much color correction as me because the phone already has that built in. Unless you're working with an app like Filmic Pro that allows you to film in flat. The slider up here where it says levels, this is going to represent your image as far as starting from the left where your shadows are, going up to the mids, and then finally all the way up to the highlights. I always start with the very middle dot, which is our midtones. And I am going to move that until I think it looks okay. And then I continue on down the left working with the shadows. And then I go up to work with the highlights. Let's say if I feel this image is just a little dark and I wish I could brighten it up, I could always add in some brightness with this slider. And of course here we have contrast, saturation, and vibrance. I only add a very little of those. By adding some of that, you can really punch up the color of your clip. Now going over to where the teardrop is, I will hit that and all the way down because I film in a flat style, I also take out sharpening inside of my camera. So I wanna add back a little sharpening in post. So I go to sharp and I don't need it all the way up to one. I bring it down to about 50% when it's on an object and when it's on the face, I add no sharpening whatsoever because I don't need any of my wrinkles accentuated. Thank you. Now I'd like to add a little bit of a color punch. So I am going to go over where my LUTs are stored and that's the cube right there. And I am going to use a LUT called Cinebase, which was made by Nick Fort, an awesome filmmaker creator. And it's going to start out at the maximum amount. I never keep my LUT all the way up. I basically move it all the way down and I usually like to bring it at about anywhere from 85 to 88. And I feel like that's tastefully enough. You don't need to drown your image with a LUT. I think it looks completely saturated and just completely fake. So you don't want to overdo that. Just make it where it looks good and tasteful, but still has that little bit of a punch. Being that I am going to use this shot as B-roll, I am going to remove the sound from it. So I'm going to go over to the audio speaker and where it says gain, I'm just going to pull it down to zero. 
The reason that I like to remove the volume from my B-roll is because sometimes you can hear the lens auto-focusing. And to me, that's just unnecessary noise. And I want to keep these videos as professional as I possibly can get. So I'm going to leave it there. Now I'm going to tap the back arrow all the way on top to the left. And that is going to bring us back to the main timeline. Now, being that all of these other clips were filmed at exactly the same time as this main clip, I could decide to copy and paste everything that I just did to all the new clips so that I only have to do color correction for one clip. Of course, we might have to tweak some of the other clips, but at least everything will be there. Now to bring what I just did to all of the other clips, I'm going to choose the clipboard and I'm going to hit copy. And I just wanna make sure, I brought up copy again because I just wanna make sure all of this has been selected. So I, I definitely wanna hit copy again. Now I wanna paste all of these attributes to the rest of the video clip. So I'm gonna bring up the multi-select tool and I can move these white brackets over here until all of the other clips have been highlighted. I go back to the clipboard and now I'll hit paste. And that is going to paste all of those attributes to all of these other clips. I will undo the multi-select tool. Now being that I'm using these images as B-roll, you know, B-roll tastefully shouldn't be any longer than three or four seconds because that's just too long. So you want to make sure you trim some of them down. The first one is about six seconds. I'm going to leave a little bit of room for transitions. And this one's about four seconds. You know what? I think right after this shot, I want this shot to come in. So again, I will press and hold on this one and bring it back over here and drop that in. Now, this is one long static shot that I took of this light because what I pictured doing was maybe doing like a spin and zoom on the name of the light. So we are going to do that now. So I am going to double tap on that clip to get into edit. And the first thing I want to do is add a little bit of stabilization because all of these shots were handheld without a gimbal. I will go to the video stabilizer and I will tap on where it says lock and load stabilization by Cormel. And that is going to analyze the video and add some stabilization. And so let's take a look at how well it did. That's pretty smooth like butter right there, but let's say that you want it to be a little more stable. You can add additional stabilization by moving up this slider right here, or you can choose some of the presets from medium to strong. And I think strong looks really good, so I'm actually going to leave it there strong. Now, as I'd mentioned, I want it to be like a spinning in zoom. So I am going to go to frame and fit. And I am going to make sure that we're all the way at the very beginning of the clip. So I'm going to hit the leftmost arrow key to get us all the way to the very beginning. So what I'm picturing is that the shot is going to come in spinning this way. So what I want to do is make this bigger. And I am going to rotate this. You notice at the end... We have some blank spots here. You want to make sure that your video clip is larger than the actual canvas. Like I don't want to spin it and then leave it like this because you can see there's no video here. You want to make sure that your clip is big enough to cover up that whole canvas. Now this is going to be our jumping off point. Now that I've made these changes, in order for these changes to take effect, I have to drop what is known as a keyframe. And your keyframe will be added by tapping the little plus symbol that's in a dot right here. What that keyframe is going to do is lock in whatever motions and size changes that you've made to your video. Now I can just play it from here and that will keep that video in that spot. But if I bring the video clip down a few seconds and double tap on the rotation to bring it back to zero and change the size back down to here, and maybe I want, want it to be right about there, LumaFusion will automatically add the second keyframe. And I will double tap the leftmost arrow to bring us all the way back to the beginning. Let's hit play to have a look at that. Okay, so I like the way that it comes swinging in like that, but boom, it just comes to a very slow and steady halt right there. I want it to actually get smaller, so I'm going to drag it out another couple of seconds, and I'm going to make it even smaller. Actually, I'm going to zero out the size, and to make it zero, all we have to do is just double tap on that line, and that will return everything to the original zero. Let me double tap the left arrow to get back to the beginning and hit play from here. 
All right, I think that looks really good. So I'm going to hit the leftmost arrow to get back to the timeline. This clip is almost about eight seconds long, entirely too long. I have to trim it. And there's a few ways that I can do that. I can bring the video clip to the playhead where I want to clip it. And I just come down and I hit the scissors and that will trim that video clip, leaving the last part highlighted and I can just throw it away in the garbage can and that shorten that clip. But I am going to hit the undo button, which is right up here undo, undo, to show you another method of doing that. You can press and hold down on the video clip and see that little arrow? We can pull it to the left and that is going to shorten up that clip. Those arrows are going to show your in and out points of that video clip. If you've trimmed a clip, you can always expand it out, bringing it back to its original clip. Even if you cut something, I'll trim it right there and throw it away. That video is not really gone. All you have to do is highlight it and pull out the end point to bring it back to its full length. But as I said, that's entirely too long, so I am going to leave that at about four and a half seconds. The first clip is a little long as well, so I am going to trim that one too. I'm not going to cut it all the way down that I'd like to cut it because I'm going to bring in some transitions here. So just going from clip to clip to clip, that's known as a jump cut. If we want the clips to be transitioned a little more subtly, we can add, you guessed it, transitions. And LumaFusion does have some really great built-in transitions. And to get to those, we are going to hit the flower that is up top and we are going to go down to where it says transitions. And you can see they have a lot of built-in transitions. And my advice to you is to go through these transitions and fool around with them till you find the one that, you know, suits your video and your taste. Let me just grab the top one, which is the cross dissolve. I'll tap it and hold it. And I'll just drag it between the two clips where I want to place it. Let's have a look to see how this looks. And you may notice that the transition itself has those nice in and out arrows. So that means you can make it a little shorter, but what you can't do is make it longer. It's there at a second. And believe you me, a second is ultra long for a transition. So I wanna make this about half a second, which is 0.12. And we'll watch it from here. I think that half a second was plenty long. Let's say you've made your transition from one second to a half second and you think the clips that you're working with are still a little too long. You can still trim these clips and that is going to keep that transition in place. But if you were to delete one of these clips, let's say I'll delete the one right behind it, the transition is going to disappear along with that clip. So I will tap the undo button to get that action back. And let's say if we want to go from clip to clip to clip, we don't have to slide the timeline and get it, you know, to the playhead. If we wanted to position the playhead perfectly between the clip, we can just tap the arrows right here and that is going to move us from clip to clip. Or if we want to get to the very beginning of our timeline, we would just double tap on the left arrow. And if we want to get to the end, double tap on the right arrow. Okay, so let's add a transition to the next video clip. Let's try a different one this time. I think these dip ones can be nice as well. So I'm just going to drop that right there and let's show you what the dip looks like. It's basically a fade in, fade out. And I have that at about a half a second. And of course we can move it up to almost about a second. Let me add another transition between the last two clips. What I can do, of course, is hit that arrow or right up here in the preview window, I can just tap to the middle of those two clips and that is going to move to that position on the playhead. Let me go all the way down. Oh, let me grab the push left transition. This was, you know, how the Star Wars had the transitions. This is what I'm going to do for this one the old Star Wars transition. Now I'd like to add a few titles. So what I'm gonna do is go to titles. We're gonna hit the icon in the upper left corner. And here you see titles, I'm going to tap on that. Now we can scroll down the list of some built-in titles that LumaFusion has. All of these are neat and cool. Let's say that these are just too busy. You want a very simplistic title. There's two ways to access a very simple title. Of course, you can go up here to where it says standard titles and just pull down the plain white title. Or you can go down to the toolbar. You see that little plus sign that's in the circle? If you hit that, 
it's going to say overlay title. And if you tap that, it will automatically throw up that generic title on your timeline, wherever your playhead is. So let me just get rid of one of these by hitting the back arrow. And of course the title, we can press it and hold it and move it anywhere that we want all over the timeline. So we can also change out the in and out points. Now to change the title, we can just double tap on that clip or once the clip is highlighted, touch the pencil to get to the edit window. And here is where we can edit that title where it says your text here. If we tap that bar, that is going to bring up every little thing about that title from the font that you're going to use to the color. If it has a shadow, how large it's going to be, the shadow distance, the shadow angle, how large it's going to be. If you want to stretch it on the X and Y axis, every little thing that you want to do can be done in this window, including changing the opacity. So right now it's at 100%. We we could drag this down to a point where it's just about barely visible if that's the style you want. To change up that text, I am going to hit the pencil and paper right here, and that is going to bring up a keyboard. I'm just going to tap delete to get rid of that generic title, and I'm going to add in my own title. Once you're done, you just hit the keyboard down sign and that is going to put away the keyboard. Now I'd like to change the font of the title and we can do that by touching where it says TT over here. We can tap that and change up the fonts. Initially, this is going to bring up a quick preview window of some of your most used fonts or you can go to choose font system and this will bring up every single font that you have in your iPad. You're going to see some fonts that have a blue arrow in a circle. If you tap that, that will actually bring a fly down menu so that you have different variations of that font to choose from. I'm going to choose bold italic. And now what I'd like to do is perhaps make the font just a little smaller. That looks good. And let's say I wanted to change the color of the title. We go down to face color and I can change it to red. There's a few different ways to change up the color. We can come to the grid or we could go to the spectrum or we could go to the sliders. And of course on the spectrum, you could just grab it and move it anywhere that you want. Or let's say there's something in the video that you want to match the title, the color to. Let's say if I wanted to use this red, I would just grab this little blue, what looks like dropper, press it and hold it and bring it over to where that red is. And you can see it's zoomed in on the screen now, right on that red. And I'm just going to drop it right there and it matches that red. How awesome is that? And you could just touch anywhere on the screen to get rid of that menu. Let's say if I wanted to add a little bit of a shadow to this, let me bring it over here so that you could see the shadow a little better. I can move the shadow distance. I could change the angle of the shadow and you can also blur the shadow a little bit tell you these little details they really make a big difference and from here you could just press and hold on the title and move it anywhere you want let's say you just want it to come up right there on the screen you can back out with upper left arrow and go back to the timeline and it's going to put the title right where you leave it let's say you want to add a little bit of an effect to the title you just don't want it to pop in and pop out maybe you want it to fade in fade out or maybe you want it to slide into the screen once it's highlighted we're going to hit the pencil so that we can edit it it's going to bring us right back to the last area that we worked in but from here we want to go to frame and fit before we start doing anything let's make sure that we're all the way to the very beginning of the video clip by hitting the leftmost arrow key and you may notice up here there are some built-in movements here for this title we can choose any one of these for the title to have an action with so let's go to pan left so luma fusion did drop in the title effect however because i moved the title on the main screen it's not working so what we need to do is restore that to its original place so i'll go back to the t for titles and i am just going to restore this to the original place by hitting i'm going to zero out the x and zero out the y we'll go back to frame and fit So there's just a lot of different built-in title effects here. And of course, we can make our own fancy little title transition title effect ourselves. Let's hit the leftmost arrow key to make sure we're all the way back to the very beginning. Now, I want this title to come sliding in on the page. So the first thing I'm going to do is decide which side is it going to come in on. I think I'm just going to have it come up from the right hand side. So what I can do is just press and hold on the screen and drag the title off this way. 
or I could also use the sliders to pull it off the screen. And once you've moved it to the area where you want it to start, you have to drop a keyframe. So come down and press the plus in the circle and that is going to drop a keyframe. Any actions that you do after this point, keyframes will be dropped automatically. And what I'm going to do is just grab the slider to bring it down to about the one second mark, which you can see down here, one second. If you want it longer, like say one and a half seconds, that would be 1.12. And at this area, what we can do now is move that title anywhere that we want onto the screen. Let's say we want to move it right here. Let's have a look at that. Let's say you are happy with the effect, but you wish the title was a little longer so that you could fade it out or make it a little longer so you could drag it off the screen. No problem. Let's go back to the main timeline by hitting the left arrow and we could just make that title a little longer by dragging out the end point. Let's go back to edit it by double tapping it once it's highlighted. Now what we should do is fade out the title with the transition between these two clips. So I am going to move this to where that transition starts. And if I wanted to move it, I would stay here. But being that I want to fade it out, what I need to do is go down to this blending option. This is the opacity of our title. Right now, it's at 100%. I want to fade it out, so I have to drop a keyframe here where it is at 100%. And now I'm going to move down to where that transition happens and it's completely black right there. And once that screen is black, now I'm going to pull this down to zero until the title fades as well. Once you've made your first keyframe, like I said, every action that follows LumaFusion will automatically drop its own keyframe. So now let's go back to the main timeline and we'll have a look at this. Let's say you've decided that that title is a little plain. I want to use one of the fancier ones. You could always just throw that title away and go and choose the title that you want to use. Maybe it's this one. I'll press and hold on this one. So I'll double tap on that so that we can edit it. I'll hit the T so that we are in the title area. And anything that's represented here on the screen, you see there's two lines of text, your text here and your text here, along with the circle. All of those are all going to have their own bars over here so that you can edit any one of those texts or that shape. So let's go to the top, your text here, pencil and paper to edit it. Let's go to the second line of text. And just like before, we can touch and hold anything on the screen to move it and manipulate it. The shape we can even make bigger from here, but we can't do that with the font. We have to actually go into the font and make it larger with the slider right here. Now let's say we wanted to have this title fade in and fade out. Let's go over to frame and fit. Make sure we're all the way at the very beginning. Let's say we wanted to have it fade in, fade out just from the corner. We would press and hold it and drag it down to the corner right where we want it, right there. Now what we would do is go down to blending. Make sure we're all the way to the left at the very beginning and we want to pull down the opacity to zero and drop a keyframe to lock in that 0% opacity at the beginning. Now we're going to pull the playhead forward to about to a second and now we're going to bring up that opacity so that it fades in very nicely. Now here's the secret about titles. They really shouldn't be any longer than four or five seconds. So from here at the three second mark, I am going to fade that out. We're going to drop another keyframe here to lock in that 100% opacity from the first second to the third. And then I'm gonna pull it all the way to the end and then drop the opacity down to zero so that we have that nice fading in and fading out effect with that title. Very nice. Let's say you wanted to change something in that title. Let me double tap that so that we can get back into that. Let's say you didn't want the circle. Perhaps you wanted a triangle instead. So let's go back to the text and where it says shape, that is going to be where that shape is. Up here is a selection of the built-in shapes that are in LumaFusion. You can choose any one of these. Let's say you wanted to use a star. We can hit that and turn it into a star. And of course we could change the face color. 
and of course any size that you want. But let's say, eh, you know what? I like the title, but I didn't really care for that shape at all. Notice on the side of the bars right here, if you tap it, a little garbage can pops up. Well, what you can do is throw it away. So just tap the garbage can and that is going to throw away that image. And also in this section, we do have that undo button as well. So you just tap the little back arrow and that is going to undo your last action. Let's say you wanted to keep this star, but you wanted to make it, you know, just maybe a little smaller and you needed two of them. Anything that's highlighted, we can duplicate by hitting the plus arrow that is in the second box over with two boxes. Tap that and that is going to duplicate that. But you're going to notice once I've duplicated it, now it's on top of the writing. You need it under the writing what's going on. Well, you can see your list of items that are here. It's the shape and then the titles, and then the new shape that you've added is at the very bottom. If you want the writing to be on top of that shape, what you need to do is collapse down that menu by tapping it so everything is in a row like this. Press and hold the three lines until it does that, and then you move it up, and you see how those other bars shifted down? Bring it to where you want to place it and drop it. And that is going to move that behind the title. And as I'd mentioned before, anything you want to throw away, you can just hit the garbage can and be done with it. Let's say you're starting a YouTube channel and you've built an awesome title. You love it. You spent a lot of time working on it. This is going to be the little lower thirds that you use for your channel. If you wanted to save that title to use in future videos, you can save it as a preset directly in LumaFusion by tapping the star with the plus symbol. And right there it says save title preset. So you can tap where it says title that is going to bring up your keyboard. And then you could put in your title channel art and hit done. And once your title is inserted, you hit the plus in the star again, and that is going to save that title so that you can use it in future projects. Let's say one day you're tired of that title. You wish you could get rid of it, but now it's stuck in your presets. To get rid of anything that's in your presets, you would just go up to it, press it and hold it till you see this fly up menu. You can either rename it, share it, or delete it. And I will choose delete. And it'll ask you if you're sure. Yep, delete it. Let's go back to the main timeline. This image actually looks a little dark too, so I'll double tap on that so I can go back to color and effects, go back to the original. I'm gonna brighten that up a little bit so that I can see some of the features on the light just a little better. That looks good. Let's say I wanna continue working with this video. I wanna bring in some more video clips. Let's go back to pictures. We just hit the top left icon until we see photos again. We'll bring that up. Drag in this top view of the light. You just pinch to unzoom it and I'll drop this in as well. We wanna get the same color and effects that we've used in the previous video clips onto these new ones. So let's grab one of these and go to the clipboard this time we're just going to choose the elements that we want to copy. So it would be the audio and the colors and the effects. We don't want to copy any of the frame and fit because we put in some movement. We don't want to copy any of that. So let's hit copy. And now let's go back to the multi-select tool. And now we go back to the clipboard, unselect the items we don't want and hit paste. And we just hit the multi-select tool to get it to go away. And from here, we're going to decide where to end it. I'm just showing the top of the light, so it doesn't really need to be any more than three seconds. Let me double tap on this clip, though, because I just want to make sure I'm going to put the image stabilizer on this one. Let's have a look. Perfect. Now what I think I'd like to do is, you know, how it kind of zooms in on the cob here. I didn't do it perfectly where the cob is exactly in the middle because I handheld this. So what I'm gonna have to do is do it directly in frame and fit. So let's double tap on that to get into frame and fit. Go to the left, frame and fit. Go to the very beginning and I'm gonna drop my keyframe. And what I'm gonna do is hit the rightmost arrow key and get that all the way to the end. I want that LED light to be exactly in the middle. So what I'm going to do to make it exactly in the middle, look, I want it to be right there. But as you can see, now I'm missing images. So what I have to do is make this significantly bigger and move that right there. So now it looks more like this.
and I am going to sort of make my own transition. So once it zooms into there, what I'm going to do is start this clip. We'll tap on that. Make sure we're in frame and fit. Make sure we're all the way to the very end. And now same thing. I'm going to make this pretty big. From where that LED cob would be. And I'm going to drop a keyframe. I'm going to pull it forward like two seconds. And then I'm going to zero everything back out. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to back out to the main timeline. Let's see how it looks. I think it's a cool effect. However, it's taking entirely too long. Transitions should be pretty fast. So what I'm going to do from here is make this one shorter. So it was about two and a half seconds. I'm going to make it around two seconds. Pull it down again, move that in the middle, make it significantly larger. I guess we'll have it end right there. Let's see. And we'll just pull this in and out right there. And from the beginning here, we're going to do this transition much quicker. Go all the way to the beginning. Do a super zoom so that it covers the whole thing. Let's see how this looks. Uh, the N1 still took a little too long, so. Now I had that transition coming out at two and a half seconds. Let's say I'm unhappy with the keyframe. I want to change that keyframe. To erase a keyframe, you just go to where you've hit the keyframes before, and now there's going to be an X inside of a circle with a circle around it. That's what you're going to hit to get rid of a keyframe. So once you get rid of your keyframe, the first keyframe or the keyframe that was preceding that one will be left there. So that's where we were originally. Now I'm just gonna make this transition about a second, a second and a quarter, and now I'm going to restore everything back to zero. So let's go back to the main timeline to see how this looks. Okay, that was better. Let's say I want to add some music to this situation. You do have access to some free music here on LumaFusion. Let's tap the little flower in the upper left-hand corner and let's go to Storyblocks. Storyblocks is a really nice service. The company they work with where they sell video clips, they sell music, sound effects, backgrounds. If you're doing a green screen, you can use any of this as a background. Footage, they have so many different built-in video clips if you want to work with those. And let's hit music. Now music, these are some full-length songs and at the top you're going to notice that some of them say free. You're more than welcome to use these in any of your videos as long as it says free. And they do have some cool free songs here. Let's listen. That one's cool. Let's listen to this one. The next one. Oh, I'm going to cry. Let's say you're looking for a particular sound, a particular beat. Down here, you can move around this little bar and highlight any of the particulars that you're looking for. So let's say you want something that's poppy and it's... Oh, it's got to populate there. Whenever you tap something, it's going to populate your menu of songs that are available according to your preferences. Happy and a beat. We'll choose that. Now you'll notice from here, there's nothing that says free. That's because Storyblocks is something that you can purchase an annual or monthly subscription to. I purchased the annual subscription and it's about 70 bucks a year and it's well worth it because I always add sound effects and music to a lot of my videos. So if you think about it, it's, you know, 70 bucks a year. That's like $5 a month or you can purchase on a monthly basis. I think it's a little more money if you pick the monthly payment schedule. It might be like $8.99 a month as opposed to paying for the year up front. So what we're going to do is just grab one of these free songs and bring it right down 
beneath the main timeline. And it's going to take just a few seconds to download and populate in that layer. All of the layers beneath the main timeline are for audio and all of the layers above the main timeline are for video. You can have a total of six layers of video and six layers of audio. But if you only have the one timeline filled with video, you can have up to 12 layers of audio. So that's a lot of different layering that you can do in there of sound effects. So let's hit play from here. And you can see over here, it looks like this is, you know, where your meter is for your audio. When it's in red, that means it's very hot. That means that audio is super loud. So let's tap the, the mixer slider here. And what we can do is pull down the volume of that particular layer. Let's drop it by 12 decibels and see how it does. We're looking over here. Okay, that's better. Now that we have our free song chose, I want to continue working with the videos. However, I don't exactly want to continue to hear that song. We can mute that track by coming over and tapping on the speaker icon. So that will mute the music, which comes in handy if you continue watching the same clip over and over again. And I am going to tap the mixer button again so that we can collapse down that menu so that we have a better look at the main timeline. So you notice the little waves in the layer that's the actual audio of the music the audio waves so let's say one day you get fancy you can start editing to the beat of the music let's hit play so let's say i want to cut this clip it's almost five seconds long i want to make it significantly shorter let me make it right there on the beat where we could do a clip change We could do the same with this layer. We'll have it change clips with the beat. Oh, that was pretty fun. Now, being that I'm just editing some clips of B-roll, there's really no need for me to have to worry about audio. Let's say you wanted to add some audio to your video, doing a voiceover. Now, what I have here is just a very small condenser microphone by a company called Seven Rhymes. And of course, you could always use your iPad's built-in microphone as well. But I find having an external microphone works so much better. So just take your associated cable and plug it into your iPad. Now, once I have the microphone in and have granted LumaFusion access to it, I can begin the voiceover process. Make sure that your video is exactly where you want it to be on the playhead to start your voiceover. You know, this will help a little bit, but I'll show you ways that if you started it in the wrong place, it doesn't matter. We can fix it in post. So to bring up the voiceover option, you come down to the toolbar and hit the plus sign in the circle and choose voiceover. You'll notice on the bottom of the screen, a little mixer has appeared, and this is telling you exactly where your audio is at. So here's a very basic, quick tutorial about audio. Whenever you're looking at the mixer, you want your audio to stay in these green bars. If you begin to hit yellow and even red, that is going to clip your audio, meaning it's too hot, it's too loud, and that is going to distort your voiceover, basically ruining your audio. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping your audio within these green bars. Now, if you find in the end it's too quiet, it doesn't matter, we can always increase the gain and the volume of that voice. Voiceover. Now, as you can see, the it is a little low, so I can do one of two things. I can increase the volume on the microphone, or I can position that microphone so that it's closer to my mouth. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it a little closer. In a little bit, I'm going to start the voiceover. I may mess up, but I'll keep on going. I'll just keep a steady stream of conversation happening because if there's something that I didn't like, I misspoke, I mispronounced a word, I can always cut it out. To start the voiceover, we're going to hit the circle and that will begin a countdown. Welcome to the new Godox SL100 Studio Light. 100 watts of pure sunshine, nothing beats a Godox. And once you're done with your voiceover, you simply hit that dot again and that is going to drop a layer of your audio in. I'll unhook the microphone because what we want to do now is listen back to the audio that we've just recorded. And to do that, we hit the play button right here. Welcome to the new Godox SL100 Studio Lite. 100 watts of pure... Sounds good. I'm going to keep it to approve the voiceover. You would just hit the green check box.
And remember, I muted that line of audio for the music, so we'll just listen back to the line of audio again. Welcome to the new Godox SL100 Studio Light. 100 watts of pure sunshine, nothing beats a Godox. And once you're done with your book... At the very end there, you can hear me continuing on with the tutorial. I want to trim that part out, and I can do that one of two ways. I cut it with the scissors and just throw it away, or I could use the in and out bars to trim it. I can also clip the very beginning. Now, before I actually begin trimming out this whole line of audio, while it's still one long piece, what I'm going to do is make this the master audio of my video. And to do that, let's double tap on it. We'll go to configuration and I will hit master, making this the master line. Right where you see that there's no audio waves, that means I took a breath. I am going to trim that out. I'm going to cut it out with the scissors. I'm going to throw that away. And I actually want to move this a little closer to the end. LumaFusion does have audio ducking. And what audio ducking is, whenever you're doing your master line of audio, it's going to allow that audio to be the prominent source of audio. So if you bring in music, once you start speaking, it's going to drop the volume of the music. Let's listen. And of course, I'll unmute the music. Welcome to the new Godox SL100 Studio Light. One hundred watts of pure sunshine, nothing beats a Godox. And that's how you can do voiceovers. So far, we've only been working with this one line of video on the master timeline. You can also add additional videos above that main timeline. And let me grab this cute little video of my cat, and I am going to park that right on top. And what I'm going to do is just a quick color correction. Throw on a little LUT and sharpen up the image. And now I'm going to get rid of the audio here. And this video is a minute long, so let me see where I want to. Uh, maybe I'll start it right about there. So I'll clip it from there. Anything that I don't want, I could just toss that away. I'll pinch the timeline so that I can bring this right to the very beginning. Now let's say that Miss Libby is the mascot for Godox, and I want her image this video to be right on top of the underlying video. Basically, we're looking for a picture inside of a picture. Now to do that, that video layer is highlighted and I'll tap the pencil so that we can edit it. Now let's go over to frame and fit. All we have to do to get the picture in picture is just make this smaller so that you can see the underlying video. Right about there looks good and I'm just going to drag it and move it up to the corner. And of course, I also could have used the sliders for that as well. Now let's say I just want to clip it a little bit from the sides. I can go to cropping and I can either cut it from the left, the right, the top or the bottom, however you want to do it. But let's go back to size and position because now I want to move this tuck it right up into the corner. And of course we can drop a keyframe to lock that into place. And now I'll hit play. Welcome to the new Godox SL100 Studio Light. Now remember, we also have the capability of six different layers. If I wanted to continue to bring in other video clips, I can always add them, of course, to the main timeline, or I can add them as individual clips above the timeline and make those smaller as well. Kind of like the Brady Bunch squares. And of course, anything you want to remove, we'll just go ahead and throw it right into the garbage can. Let's say you've decided to add a main title to your video. Let's hit the plus sign in the circle and choose overlay title. That's gonna bring a title up into one of the different layers, but what you can do is grab it and hold it and move it right to the beginning of the main timeline. That's going to drop in the title at the very beginning, moving the rest of your project down. Now let's edit our title. Hitting text, tapping on the bar. Let's make this main title about three seconds. So then it'll go right from the title into the video. But let's say you don't want it to just jump from the title into the video. We can fade that in by going up to transitions 
and choose the dip transition between the title and the video clip. Let's actually make this title a little longer because I want this to fade in at the very beginning. Double tap on the title, go to frame and fit, make sure we're all the way at the very beginning. And you can see this purple bar down here on the timeline. This is going to show you where that transition is fitted in. Let's go to blending and we'll bring the opacity down to zero. We'll drop our first keyframe to lock it there and we'll move the slider up to about a second and bring the opacity back up to 100% so that it fades in very nicely. Now what we can do is also have the music start with the very beginning of the title. So let's press and hold on the song and drag it up till it's even with the title. And if you feel that title is a little too long, we can always shorten it. Welcome to the new Godox SL100 Studio Lite. Now let's say I'm all done. I'm very happy with the way my project turns out. Now I want it to end. Using this as a little key, you can see all of your videos are here, but look how long the song is. Now we don't want this whole song without video. So what we're going to do is get rid of the song by highlighting it, cutting it, and getting rid of the excess. To end the video, let's have the last clip simply fade out. Go down to blending. We'll drop a keyframe right here at 100%, drag it all the way to the end, and bring the opacity down to zero so that it fades out nicely. Now, I want the music to last just a little longer than the video, so I'm gonna have the music stop. I'm just going to drag that, and what I'm going to do is have the music fade out with the video as well. So I am going to use the fader on the audio line and I'll use the video to see where it begins to fade out. Now I wanna edit that audio line by hitting the pencil. Now from the audio line, I wanna drop a keyframe right here. Then I'm gonna hit the rightmost arrow key to bring it to the very end. I'm going to go to gain and drag it all the way down to zero. So now the music is going to fade out with the picture. 